What is up guys, this is Cheeto back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest build of the Xtrend XT version 7.5 and this is the 27th June 2023 build. I would say it's a much more stable experience overall. And if you're wondering about the ROM's file size, well it's very less, it's about 1.5 GB almost or even less than that. It also includes the G apps within it and it also has the MIUI camera and stuff right out of the box. So that's just awesome. And here, let me actually show you in the ROM changelog, this bump up release version to 7.5, added setting CY and stuff. And we have a lot more changes right here, but I'll show you each and everything of the details of the ROM, but you can read out all the changes if you want from right here. For the device changelog as well, there are a lot of changes. Talking about the about phone section, it has this kind of animation. And in here we have the Android version as Android 13. You can also see the phone specification right here and the device code name. And we have the extended version as XT version 7.5. The maintainers are Niranjan and Suresh. So huge thanks to the developers of this ROM. We have the Android security patch as May 5th, 2023, not quite June or July yet, of course. And we have the build date here as 26th June, 2023. And the stock kernel here is the 4.14 Miraki kernel and the SNX radius shows as enforcing. In the system settings, you will get a lot of things like the system updater is present. You can check for updates from right here. And this is the official build. So the updates or the OT updater should work fine. And if you don't know how to flash this ROM on your device, you can check out the flashing guide from the description. In the suite parts, we have the high refresh rate option at first. You can set the screen refresh rate to 120Hz all the time or kind of auto 60 to 120 or you can just lock it to 60Hz. I have been using 120Hz all day long, no issues. We have the refresh rate profile and you can set per app's refresh rate to 60, 90 or 120 depending on which one you need. And we have the DC dimming right here. You can enable or disable it if you want. The thermal profiles are there and you can set per app's thermal profile to benchmark, browser, camera, dialer, gaming, navigation, streaming and videos. We also have the Mi Sound Enhancer and in here we do have the Youth Edition and stuff and all the other presets. And with the Youth Edition for me, it sounds really great with the headphone jack. And we have the other presets like the bass booster, bass reduction, etc. options. And we also have the sound scenario. You can choose it to default smart music, video or voice. And we also have the hi-fi audio option in case you need that. There is also a clear speaker option. You can enable it if your speaker sounds muffled. So that's pretty much it about the system settings because there is no gesture settings right here. It is present with the like customization in the extensions. Now, let me show you the stock launcher. Well, if I show you the settings of it, well, this is a extended home kind of launcher. And in the recent panel, I have enabled all the things. That's why you can see the screenshot, the lens and the clear all option. And also the RAM usage status actually shows up on the bottom. And you can actually go into the split top mode and stuff from right here if you want. And in the miscellaneous settings, we have the background blur depth, the suggestions option. You can disable the suggestions if you want. And hidden and protected apps is the app locking option. You can lock any particular app from here. The app lock is not present in the setting, but yes, this option is there in the launcher settings. So app lock will be working with the launcher. That's great. And let me go back in the recents. We have the other options like the memory info, background opacity, and all the other features you can enable. App drawer. And here we have the themed icons, enable app drawer search bar, icon labels in drawer and stuff. And in the home screen settings, we have the lock layout, add app icons to the home screen, double tap to sleep, and the wallpaper scrolling and zooming. Then we have all the other customization, even with the corn radius. Let me go back. We have the icons and in here we have the icon pack changing option, then the notification dot and the icon size, font size, etc. And in here talking with the widgets, yes, there is the Google clock widget and stuff. They are working fine. If you're noticing this big clock, I have made it to the full size almost and the animations with it is actually working, but I couldn't simply find the like battery widget of Android 13 here. That's how it is. But all the other widgets like the subscriber account widget and stuff will be working fine. By the way, the wallpaper I'm using is from the fresh walls app. Now talking with the stock apps, yes, it does have this AOSP kind of dialer. So it does have this auto call recording option in the sound and vibration settings. And you can also choose the format from here. So this is great that this stock dialer here has the call recording option and stuff. It has restored everything from Google App Data Backup. The Google App Data Backup and Restore is working perfectly fine here. No need to worry about that. By the way, if you're wondering about the stock apps, yes, it also has the MIUI camera and it also has the gallery app. And it also has this file app, the Dolby Atmos and stuff. Everything is present right here. You do not need to worry about the stock apps of this ROM. It is also very light and it also includes this wire launcher. If you don't like it, you can just change it from the default apps. 
The other apps like the Poco Launcher, the Pixart app and stuff were restoring from my Google App Data backup here. Whenever I'm scrolling, when it reaches to the bottom, I feel a haptic feedback or if it reaches to the top while I'm scrolling, it does a vibration. I think it is present in the sound and vibration settings. Let me show you this. Media call ring etc. volume controls are there and we have the vibration and haptics and in here, otherwise I can still feel the vibration if I disable the touch feedback. Okay. So if I move this touch feedback scroll to the like lowest. As you can see right now i cannot feel that scrolling vibration i don't like it very much if you like it you can enable it if you want let me go back we have the other vibration and ringtone vibration pattern and stuff changing option then the dial pad tone screen locking sound per app volume control is also there by the way this is how the volume panel looks like you can expand the volume panel just like this or if you want to switch the output device you can do that from right here it shows blank right now but yeah as you can see this is how you can switch the audio device no idea why it lags a little bit but yeah this is how it is and as you can see you can put the phone into vibrant or silent from right here let's talk about the stock camera well you are getting the MIUI camera right out of the box and i have enabled the swipe up feature and with that we get the short video vlog slow motion and all the other options dual video and stuff and even for normal videos you can shoot up to 4k 30 fps with the rear camera and in the pro mode also you can go and shoot 4k 30 fps videos if you want now let me take a portrait selfie so that I can show you the sample. I just took a selfie. Now let's switch to the rear camera. Let's just switch to the normal photo mode. And here I just captured that photo. So yeah, it takes the photos really fast, no issues. And here if I just try to open it. So yes, it's a 16 megapixel photo with the rear camera. The quality is really good, no problems whatsoever. And the MIUI camera is really fast. It's not laggy like the Anix camera. And here, I mean the Leica camera. And here the selfie quality is good enough as well. And the portrait, the background bokeh and stuff, if you're noticing, it's blurred perfectly fine. And in the info section, it is also a 16 megapixel photo. So yeah, the optimization is great even for the Redmi Note 10 Pro. So no issues whatsoever. And the lenses are working fine. Like the ultra wide angle, if you're noticing, is working great. No issues. And the 1x and the 2x zooming option also is working fine. And if you're wondering about the super macro. And yep. Great quality, I would say. Even the super macro lens is working fine, no problems. So by default, we get this MIUI camera and that's just awesome. In my opinion, very optimized camera experience, I would say. I'll show you the customization part later on, but here, let me show you the quick setting panel. This is how it looks like. I have customized it. That's why it looks like this. It also has the QPR2 kind of clock, if you're noticing. So yeah, even with this clock, I would say the animation is not like too bad. It's like not lagging or something when you are normally doing it but if you just do this you will notice this clock minorly lags while you are scrolling just normally you don't see that lag that i have to mention but here the pattern of the quick setting panel if you're noticing even the brightness slider style if you're noticing i have customized that also we have different toggles i have added the wi-fi mobile data the bluetooth toggle flashlight and stuff the auto rotate night light hotspot nearby shared also the one hand mode do not disturb battery saver screen recording is there there is the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time also includes with the lower quality file size and the bigger file size limit and stuff all these features the refresh rate you can switch from right here the sound toggle is there the always on display toggle is there debut toggle is there and we have the ambient display data saver dark theme dolby atmos and the me sound enhancer then we have the airplane mode now let's talk about the battery settings i cannot simply see the battery charging cycle or the battery info stuff right here it only shows the battery temperature like 37 degrees here it shows for the celsius you can tap to switch scale and the battery optimization is there battery manager battery charge warning battery saver etc now let's talk about the battery life well i have been using it with the aku battery app and with that these all are estimated numbers guys so my screen on time here it shows about six and a half hours or you can say about seven hours of screen on time which is decent because this device is almost two years or more than that old and we have the screen off as 24 hours and the combined use shows as 18 hours so the battery life is decent and in the health section as you can see my battery health shows as 86 percent so again my battery's health is quite low because it's old battery almost and it's a two and a half years old battery so with that i would say this is a good amount of screen on time by the way i have been using the device all day long with 120 hertz in the display settings this is how it looks like we have the brightness and adaptive brightness and stuff all the settings you can customize and we have this extra dim feature as well you can customize that if you want and we have the lock screen settings in here we have the privacy control then the show device control that's for google home controls and the control from lock device for that double line clock is there then we have the always show time info that's always on display we also have the ambient display but i cannot really go into this advanced settings as you can see if i tap on it doesn't do anything and we have the screen timeout you can set it to up to 30 minutes and the lock screen timeout as well you can set up to 30 minutes 
display size and text this is basic android 13 feature we have the font size display size and the width and the night light you can customize and change the scheduling option colors are there we can change it to boosted saturated or natural i have been using it with a boosted one looks good auto rotate screen option is there up to 270 degrees of course 180 degrees will be working there is the screen saver and we have the allow window level blurs double tap to wake and the prevent accidental wake up in the wallpapers and styles this is how it looks like you can change the wallpapers from here by the way if you are wondering about the default wallpaper this is how it looks like we have the 16 colors for the basic and wallpaper colors the dark theme option is there the themed icon option is there and the upgrade we can choose up to 6 by 10 inside security this is how it looks like in the settings of it we do have the quick unlock but in the more settings we do not see the app lock because that is there in the launcher settings now inside the face unlock and fingerprint let me just set up the face unlock lock quickly so you can change it to when swiping up on lock screen and stuff if you want for the face unlock and inside fingerprint we also have this particular option which is the unlock only when the screen is on so it won't accidentally unlock in your pocket while you tap the fingerprint scanner so that's really awesome let me go back and right now let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed but for that i have to lock the device and i just double tap on the blank area because it has the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen let me show you so I tap the fingerprint scanner, as you can see it unlocks. The speed is really, really fast, I would say. No problems whatsoever that I have faced with the fingerprint scanner. Just notice how fast it unlocks. Let me try one more time. So yep, as you can see, it unlocks really, really fast. Now, if I enable the always on display, let me show you how it looks. So this is how the always on display looks like for me because I have customized the clock font size. It is really, really big right now. And if I tap the fingerprint scanner again, as you can see, it unlocks perfectly fine. And with the animations and stuff, it's really great. Only thing I would say the like advanced display settings are not there. So there is no wake up gesture here. You have to keep that in mind. But otherwise the animations and stuff of waking the device is working great. And the double tap to sleep is also working. There is a lock screen shortcuts. For some reason it has torch on both sides, but it works with the like tapping. You don't have to tap and hold. Now let me show you the face unlock. For that if I just swipe up and hold the device towards my face and it unlocks. But just notice while I'm using the front camera the black border is a little too much. Let me show you one more time. Okay. This black border it's not aligned properly I would say. But it's a little too much for this front camera. I've never seen this much of a black border on the Redmi Note 10 Pro. But yes as you can see this is how it looks like while it's using the front camera shows recognizing face and if i point the device towards my face it unlocks so face unlock works fine no issues now let me show you the app lock this is how it looks like and if i just tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see the app particularly unlocks so app lock face unlock and fingerprint everything is working perfectly fine now let's talk about the basic things well the dnm info shows as l1 so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p here and the safety net also passes right out of the box so banking apps will not be a problem here and the ir blaster present on the device is also working perfectly fine if you're seeing that light that simply means the ir blaster is actually working great and this rom also comes with the unlimited google photo storage backup so this is great you can like backup your photos and videos unlimitedly from your device just like a pixel device so this is a great feature and this feature is present right out of the box in this ROM. In the test 2 fo website, I have seen, yes, the Chrome browser actually sets the refresh rate to 80 FPS for some reason. But with something like Opera browser, if I open the test 2 fo website, as you can see, the refresh rate right away goes above 110 plus FPS and reaching about 120 FPS. So yes, 120 Hertz is actually working, but with Chrome, it's a little buggy, I would say on the Redmi Note 10 Pro. But overall, I would say the experience of like scrolling and stuff, it's perfectly fine. Even with Twitter, let me show you. Yep, the scrolling experience is good enough. I have to say once the things actually load in Twitter, the scrolling experience, it's really, really fast. No problems whatsoever. And overall, the RAM management, like while switching between apps, it's not a problem at all. It keeps almost all the apps or all the things that you have opened earlier no problems at all and i would say yes it's a budget device so you have to keep that in mind as you can see even in the recent panel it's almost flying through the ui and if you're wondering about the overall performance and the ui benchmarks and stuff here are the android and geekbench score with a cpu stress test on this particular build to get you an idea about the extended version 7.5 on the redmi note 10 pro's performance Jumping into the settings and the extensions, this is where you will find the customization and in here we have plethora of things as you are noticing. We have the ambient decor at first, the music ticker, edge lighting 
and you can have it on show always even the color you can change and we have the light trail view and stuff you can change it to faded or solid a lot more customizations are there even the ambient aod customization options are there in here we have the animations we have the screen of animation you can change to see at your scale if you want android p style animation and the power menu animations are there then we have the animation style and the duration and interpolator you can also customize let me go back to the buttons in here we have the show volume panel on the left side volume record wake and stuff let me go back we have the gestures in here we have the system gestures but in this particular settings you don't see the navigation kind of settings because it's separate we have the power button and calls personal power button action you can change and we have the 100 mode and stuff working perfectly let me go back we have the quickly open camera as well then the swipe right screenshot option is also there and it is working fine there is the share edit and the delete option the capture mode and stuff will appear when it's needed we have the long press power button toggle torch double tap to sleep on the lock screen and the status bar both options are there now in the lock screen we have the clock font and you can actually change between these many fonts plethora of lock screen clock fonts are there i will show you those here you can also change the lock screen clock format to single or double line lock screen clock color you can also customize and even the font size we have the left shortcut and the right shortcut choosing option then we have the info shortcut option lock screen charging info Disable ripple effect and the media cover art you can enable and adjust the blur level then the lock screen weather and stuff you can enable we have the pulse the lock screen notification count everything and inside navigation we have the system navigation gestures in here we have the settings we have the swipe to invoke assistant advanced gestures options are there we have the extended swipe action and for that we have plethora of options like this let me go back we have the left edge right edge customization and even the pill length you can customize i have made it to the fullest i mean button space you can customize and the haptic feedback also you can enable if you want but for some reason this swipe right screenshot is actually not working for me a quick correction guys that i later tried to actually set up the google assistant and it did work finally and after a reboot it actually worked perfectly fine and right now as you can see if i swipe up from the corners i can actually access the google assistant notifications in here we have the heads up and you can customize that we have the kill up button show notification count annoying notification toast step icon reticker and we have the notification panel count and stuff breathing sms options are there and this reticker actually needs a system restart if you're noticing we have this app colored background and stuff with the power menu we have the hide on lock screen for security we have the advanced reboot as well by the way the power menu looks like this you can go into the advanced settings you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from here by the way the background blur if you're noticing even here looks so beautiful we have the quick settings and the layout you can actually change to the vertical layout and stuff and even the column and row you can change it to portrait in the quick quick setting portrait you can actually change the value of it to three kind of toggles i would say and we have the brightness slider style and you can actually change it to plethora of options i have been using it with the minimal thumb but there are a lot more options just for the brightness slider this is awesome let me go back we have the brightness slider position you can have it on both quick setting and quick quick setting and we have the position you can choose it to bottom auto brightness icon quick setting header background you can enable and the tile styles you can actually change it by the way with the default style let me actually show you this is how it will look simply so yeah you can go with other options like these let me go to the quick setting quick pull down option and these are the options disable quick setting on lock screen option is there for security again and we have the quick setting footer warnings the footer text etc options let me go back to the status bar in here we have the clock and date you can enable it and there is also the background chip you can have it on solid color accent and the normal outline and a lot more other options are there if you want to use those clock font and format changing option right here we have the traffic indicators you can enable it if you want we have the battery customization and plethora of battery styles are there i have been using it with the icon landscape r but you can go with the other options as well even the percentage you can have it on inside or right or left we have the battery percentage when charging and the battery bar inside status bar whether we have these many options and in here we have the system icons headset bluetooth etc icons are there and the vo wi-fi icon you can also set it to dynamic or you can go with the asus oneplus moto etc options volte calling and stuff should be working really great i don't have a sim card in the device right now but volte calling will not be a problem in this rom mic and camera privacy options are there we have a lot more options for those let me go to the theme room in here we have the dark theme you can also enable it and change it to pitch black if you want to let me go back we have the advanced moonlit theme settings and you can change this to vibrant expressive etc options even the luminance and the chroma factor you can customize with the theme background let me go back we have the wi-fi icon styles 
plethora of styles for that is here and also we have the signal icon styles as well and again plethora of options for that also in the font style you get amazing amount of font style options including with the nothing dot font and stuff nokia pure oneplus sans and slate and oppo sans etc options are there let me go back we have the icon shapes in here these are the shapes that you get we have the settings dashboard style you can change it if you want let me go to the extras in here we have the game space you can add any game to have the overlay parallel space option is there so you can have two accounts for each app we have the google services option and we have the unlock higher pc in games charging animation and this high developer option for some reason and there is a full screen apps and the usb configuration you can set it to file transfer for convenience ignore window secure flag option is there sensor block per package and the status bar right and left padding you can customize so that is a lot of customizations i have to say but some of the features i do still miss that is like the charging cycles and stuff and the battery kind of widget those things are simply not present in this rom you have to actually sacrifice on these things if you are okay with that you will be fine but otherwise you get a lot of good things like a lot of customization in this rom a separate aosp dialer which can record or which can always record your calls if you want or if you need that feature you this rom does have that the very optimized miui camera is here so with all this i would say it's a really great experience give this video a thumbs up if you liked it share this video with your friends if you want them to know how this rom is running on the redmi note 10 pro please subscribe to the channel guys if you haven't yet this is tito from kdn tech signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye bye now